Good evening everybody, welcome to the studio this evening and in tonight's program <laughs> we'll be carrying on with this uh, lion there we go, that's not bad right lots more lines I'm, I'm not afraid not afraid of more lines but um, yeah, unfortunately that's what it is we're now doing hair and lots of it so it, that's what I was going to do last night and I never got around to doing was um, tightening up this connector can I do that no I could do with getting a uh, small screwdriver out but I don't happen to have one to hand so what I'm going to do here is see if I can just use the scalpel blade. Shouldn't really do this, not with a scalpel blade. I need to be able to see a little better. And that doesn't help a great deal. It would do if I had it plugged in because this um, Sort of. Well, is that enough? Let's see. We will find out. We will find out. What I was just doing there was just attempting to close up the uh, the connector in the uh, in the back of that pen, and I need to at some point I need to charge those batteries so that that magnifying glass. Well, I. Uh, you, probably didn't see what I was doing there but I've got a magnifying glass it has a ring light underneath it uh, which can be driven from batteries which is uh, on the system on the stand but I, uh, I keep forgetting to charge them and uh, it can be driven from the mains as well but I can, you've only got so many mains blocks is one of the things with so many crafts you have so many things plugged in super speedy good evening welcome to the studio what with um, pyrograph machines lights and uh, what else is powered around here um, the uh, rotary power tools uh, the fan, the compressor, there's all sorts of stuff plugged in all over the place and uh, I always forever plugging and unplugging things for a start <laughs> I think I've got something like about 20, 20 odd things plugged in just around here. Soon adds up. Not a lot of power requirements, just a lot of plugs.
Unfortunately, I don't know if I can do anything about it, but the um, the grain just runs across there. Let's see if I can, because the grain is a little bit harder. It doesn't take colour quite so well, and it tends to stand out a little bit. Yeah, we can do something about it if I'm careful. Coyote Dancer, good evening, welcome to the studio this evening. And how am I on this lovely day? Uh, well, I'm fine, but it's not a lovely day. It has been raining all day today. So it's sort of... Um, I actually don't mind the rain too much. Um, but it, uh, it's been sort of a dark and overcast day all day today. It's uh, that one there, yeah. So I'm just disguising the uh, the marks left by the grain. As far as much as I am able at this stage. Thank you. It hasn't changed much. I think I'm sure you were in last night. It hasn't changed much since then, because <laughs> I don't tend to do much between streams. Oh, great I guess I shouldn't really do it but there is uh, if Captain uh, Captain Brown Coats on as well Coyote Dancer who is also doing pyrography I believe so um, you might like to run a second stream or at least uh, run a second window check him out and then uh, come back here of course <laughs> don't mind And there's just uh, and there, uh, yeah. Right, so got largely got rid of the, some of the darker, the lighter areas off of those. Uh, the grain, we'll deal with it more later on, but uh, they were just standing out a little bit prominently. I do need to darken all of this back end down if I'm going with my um, sort of lighting scheme of a fairly light 
bright light towards the face and most of the back here the mane is going to be dark and uh, it's now making me wonder how I'm going to darken around here but that's something we'll deal with later so if I darken the background to get the hair in it's going to be interesting the fur Turning that connector has worked quite a bit because I can feel there's more heat actually on the tip than there was previously uh, and there was yesterday basically when we were uh, trying to do this. We kept disconnecting yesterday um, which you basically recognise because the tip goes cold um, it actually feels differently um, and it doesn't leave marks of course. <laughs> All sorts of bangs and flashes going off over here. UK it's bonfire night, so there's fireworks going off and uh, and things. Actually, usually they end up watching out the window. Um, I haven't done that tonight. I actually came in and sort of almost because I've been out at, uh, in an office today, so um, it's been quite a long day. I was kind of falling asleep when I uh, was. I had my tea, sat down here, put a couple of uh, videos on, uh, uh, YouTube videos on, and um, probably almost fell asleep. So The one thing about doing a stream is it doesn't have to wake you up. Okay, now there's a lot of hair on here now of course but I'm still doing fairly long strokes so that we still get that impression of long hair if I do little short strokes it it starts to look like short hair and um, you, you lose that long sort of flowing uh, look Just almost building layer upon layer. Slowing down a little bit so that I get um, some darker. Uh, because otherwise all that will happen is if I keep the same speed up all the time what will happen is effectively I'll just colour it in. And it's like using uh, using a you know a pencil. And as long as you don't still effectively press down really, really hard, after a while of, of scribbling, it, it gets to a level of colour and it won't go actually any darker. It will when you start and you cross over, it also gets darker and darker up to a point, and then it, it stops growing. Uh, and pyrography is the same, so uh, it would just become one sort of mass flat colour. So you kind of have to sort of slow down create some back, uh, darker lines um, just to sort of build another layer of texture and colour on top
and since I started it that way I'm still trying to create thin lines not great big fat fat lines And the goal here really is just to keep going over the top and and darken this area down. It's it's in shadow. It's in quite strong shadow. Uh, no, I do crank them down quite a bit, Coyote Dancer. Um, I, I do make sure they're tight because the other thing... Um, the other thing about them, if they're loose, then the joints get hot because of, there's extra resistance there, and that's what's actually heat causes the heating. And you lose heat off the tip, the off the tip, as well as I don't particularly want to press down and have the thing suddenly ping off, and have a what would be I won't say a red hot tip, but a hot tip sort of just loose around on, in in the workspace all of a sudden. So you know, I do I do make sure they are really well t uh, tightened down. It's kind of why I prefer the fixed tip pens. Aldel H, good evening. And welcome. I, I almost could do with a slightly longer cord as well, but you don't really want long cords, and, and it certainly is better. And there's a trade off as well because this is a light duty cord, and that's a heavy duty cord. I'd be better with both heavy duty, but. Um, it kind of helps with this particular pen to use a light duty card because when I turn the heat down, it'll go down further uh, with the light duty because there's more power loss in the light duty cable and the heavy duty. But generally speaking, I prefer heavy duty, but it's a little bit less flexible. And unfortunately, just this just keep is just the right length to keep catching the edge of the board. Uh, this is the this is the light duty card and this is the heavy duty card. There's um, not a lot of difference between them, but it, but physically I can feel the difference. So the one in the left here is the heavy duty. You look at them, you can't really see it, but um, I can sort of feel it. Uh, and they're both the same. They're not differently coloured. I think um, I don't know. I think I have seen pictures where one cord is is slightly different. It has a different colour between heavy and light. But I know I ordered one of each um, because I wanted when I got this because I wanted to see what the difference is. I've never bothered um, buying a different one just yet because with them not being fixed at the pen end, I kind of don't need any more. <laughs> well it's important and I, I don't know it, it, with with me being familiar with electronics that's kind of just why I, I know about that but for most purposes it doesn't doesn't make a great deal of difference to me so you, when you feel it the, the light duty cable gets slightly warm 
the heavy duty one tends not to but I never run the pens at full power so if I'm losing a little bit of power in the uh, in the cable they just turn them up a little bit it's not efficient It might make a difference with with some of the really larger pen, uh, larger nibs, the real wide ones. Um, then I'd probably want to make sure they were on the, the heavy duty cords, just from the point of view of um, the more power you get to the tip, the better it will keep its temperature. I'm just debating whether to uh, to cheat slightly and just use the shader a little bit <laughs> in these areas just to uh, to bring the overall colour down a bit. problem with doing that is it will actually smooth out all the texture a little bit so mm, I kind of like the idea of doing it but don't actually want to do it because it will it will lose me this lots of you know painstakingly, painstakingly built up um, sort of hair texture Yeah, that colour's starting to sort of arrive a little bit now there.
Mm, and yes, I am starting to think about this background. If I am going to darken the background, I will have to be a little bit wary. It will change the perception of what this looks like. In fact, it will probably it will probably look a lot lighter if I do that. So I might have to might consider doing the background um, soon. Or sooner rather than later. Um, so that um, I can then judge the uh, the actual sort of main colour better. I'm going to do a little bit of work with the other pen in this bottom right hand corner. So again this lighting wise this bottom corner here is quite dark so dark enough so that you're not going to see individual hairs so I am going to apply a dark background with this and we'll see see whether I take it all the way dark or I'll leave it sort of a mid a mid dark but I want it dark enough so that you're not expecting to see hairs I 
I guess one of the things I should do here is practice smooth creating smooth lines without blobs which I'm not succeeding at because when I come to do the rest of the background that's precisely what I'm going to need to do I wonder if I should try my other pen actually where's it gone? there it is I've got a, I've got a slightly wider shader which I've not, uh, I've not used a great deal, so I do need to get used to using it. Uh, now I know this one has an asymmetric heating pattern, so that's something I also have to be aware of. But it's slightly, it's got a slightly wider um, heating, uh, heated area, so it should help to actually create smoother textures. Oh, no textures. <laughs> Perhaps is a better way of describing it. Now the bottom of this pen is not particularly smooth. There we go. It was scratching on the wood. And uh, as I've just discovered, that was probably just the way I was holding it because it's now gone smooth. Now, the right hand side of this pen is a lot hotter than the left, so I do have to be a little bit wary because if that right hand side if pressure changes such that I apply more pressure on the right hand side of this tool I know I'm going to get a dark area which I know I want this dark but I want it controlled dark I don't want it going dark just because I've put the tool down wrong Now I do have an even wider shader than this but I couldn't get on with that earlier when I tried it before on a different picture so that's something I'll probably end up having to practice with on a scrap piece of wood rather than an actual image that I want to keep, yeah, well I say I want to keep, I want to be a, you know, a, 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 a viable piece that can be displayed. Puffy Twiglets, Twiglet, good evening, you've got twins then. Um, welcome back to the studio this evening, how are you doing? I trust you're starting to feel better now. I hope you are anyway. I eventually watched um, uh, last night. I eventually watched the Saturday's uh, Doctor Who episode, Fuffy Twiddler. So I know what you mean at the end. You know he's going to get out of it, though. So
Okay, I must have learned something about using this tool because the last time I used it to try and do something like this it didn't work as well as this is doing, so... If fireworks gone out, going on out here, if I if I hadn't gone to sleep earlier on just before the stream and I wasn't streaming, I'd be uh, I'd probably turn the light out and open the curtains and just watch all the fireworks going off. But uh, we're not too bad, thank you. Here, it's um, it's been a long day for me at work. Uh, I've actually been in an office all day today, and I've been up early, so I, I am a bit tired. Um, but um, uh, Lady Zara has been busy with uh, with things all day today, so she's doing quite well, thank you. She's keeping at least one of the cats company downstairs so that it's not uh, not bothered by the fireworks. And June is such. What's he's plastic? Because he's not a plastic cat. He will bite you and scratch you and things like that, but. Given that he will um, sit right by the side of the car when you start it up and not move and things like that, he's probably out there almost yawning at the fireworks going off. Uh, evening, 3D bloke. Good evening. That picture wasn't that bad last night. I know what it's like close up. This is this is somewhat the same. Close up, I'm looking at it going, that looks horrible. Ten feet away, that looked fantastic. <laughs> So, did, did, have you kept it or did you wipe it all off? <laughs> well, all I can say is, you know, for the for a first attempt, um, you know, certainly to a viewer, for your first attempt, it didn't look bad. Yeah, you overwork the mountain a little bit, but it's kind of like it's kind of like you you looked like you didn't need to have a lot of practice before you'd have been doing that really well. It was almost as though you kind of just needed to understand how it worked and and you kind of so almost halfway through you kind of when you started doing the trees really you kind of went it was it was kind of like ah now i understand how this works and and you it just changed because the clouds were nice oh they look nice again camera things so.
So in the future, when you're totally famous, it's kind of like here is a, a here is an early 3D block uh, image. You know, uh, it's uh, since 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 it's a first try, it's only a million pounds. Yeah, not down price. Yeah. It's um, I can see that being a problem. You got so used to uh, to the acrylics. I mean, I, I, I'm so I'm kind of used to doing the um, if it's not enough, I can put more on top type of um, thing like this that I might I might have less problem with it when I come round to trying it but I have no idea yeah no yeah, it makes uh, makes sense Mind you, don't necessarily underestimate what might sell uh, free because, of course, it's um, it's something. It's a new style to you, so people who do collect your works might find it. Not, not say that one, which you're not happy with, but you know, things that you don't consider to be good enough. Might actually, they might actually think is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I think that though was just partly be because you were all you were you were trying to keep up, weren't you? A little in, in a way, you were trying to keep up. I know you weren't that bothered about it, but there was that pressure almost to keep to keep up with Bob. And I know partly the idea was to show how difficult it is to do that, and. Um, also, you were streaming it as well, and you I don't think you particularly want it to set out on purpose to fail and mess it up, so it does add a heck of a lot of concentration on things. <laughs> you never know, you might actually sell it. As long as the people understand what they're getting, you know. I mean, at this stage, if you made material costs, you'd um, you'd be in profit. Oh no! When when you, uh, you I, I kind of could see it, but um, th there's a difference between seeing it as as what I call a ten foot picture. You know, seeing it as somebody who is just looking at it, and seeing it as 
um, you know, an artist might look at it, you know. So I, I, I do know what you mean, but. Um, hmm. He's a professional fluffy twiggler, you know, it's, um, you can't keep everything. I, it, 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 just as it sounds, it's kind of a problem I'm getting here in that, you know, all these stuff that I'm, I'm doing, I kind of would really like this lion and some, I'd really like to keep, but I can't, um, there's just no way for me to to stall that much stuff ultimately um, and uh, uh, yeah I'm sure when, when you when you see the actual clo uh, you know, good photograph of the the, the the trees are great the the water is great the clouds are not bad the mountain is untidy in that one uh, it, it doesn't look quite right But there again, Fluffy Twiggler, you know, um, if you cross um, 3D's palm with lots of silver, or preferably some some sort of specially printed paper stuff, um, I'm sure he'd uh, quite happily transfer the picture to you. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know the um, uh, free free making, uh, you know, reusing his uh, some of his materials, uh, and therefore scrapping and scrapping an image is is something you'll kind of have to get used to, Fluffy Twiggler. Uh, as um, as an illustrator. There'll be a lot of stuff that you do that nobody wants and you know you'll get through a halfway or a fully through a project and they'll go forget it not interested and you'll be sat there thinking but i've just wasted all this work <laughs> yeah, I, I, I never actually saw you do it, but I do remember, um, who was it? I can't remember who it was now, but so he, he went on for, a, for, for days afterwards. So what's, uh, what's on the programme tonight, uh, Free? Is it gaming tonight, or are you doing some more um, some more art stuff?
What I should do is practice slowing down and doing some of this stuff in one pass rather than about 10 passes. Actually, it isn't as easy as it sounds to slow down. We're all so used to using things like pencils. That actually slowing down and doing it really slowly is quite... Um, quite challenging mentally. <laughs> yeah, it it it'd be some. Um, ow! It's uh, there's actually quite a lot of heat underneath the the underneath the board gets quite hot. So you don't want to be doing it on a plastic bag or something like that. Um, yeah, graffiti, and and, and I bet uh, whoever did over the top didn't do as good a job. I'd be kind of like just destroying somebody else's art for the sake of it battlefield battlefront 2 okay i may i may drop in tonight and watch that i'd, I'd probably be lurking though because i if i if i can get the enthusiasm to do it i want to do some more work on the website tonight see if i can get the thing uh, at some point live Oh, the council, yeah. I mean, yeah, I understand the graffiti thing, and in the right places, it, um, in the right places, it can look really well. I, of course, have a prefer preference for, shall we say, illegal graffiti, which is which is art style as opposed to just a tag. Um, that's kind of like what's good about signing, you know, signing your name in quotes in um, in multiple colours. Now, do some sort of um, art piece, then they can look good. Now I'm generalising quite a bit there. I don't understand the graffiti yet market, so uh, uh, scene as it, I guess you might call it. Yeah. No, I. I mean, they they are in a difficult situation, you know. Um, I guess where. It's it's kind of like if they let one piece stand, then. You know how how do they. Um, dis you know, discriminate if you like against uh, between one person and another. You know, what makes yours better than Fred's or Jim's or Jane's or, or something like that? And you're talking of spray can stuff. I remember watching a, a few demonstrations. It must have been on must have been on YouTube of people actually using A3 paper but using spray cans and things and creating things like space scenes and stuff with 
we just stand at spray campaign not um, you know not using small special cans or anything like that and thinking that <laughs> they're, do, they're doing the Bob Ross thing as in yeah spray this spray that this that and, and you come out with this beautiful painting in about 10 minutes of, of something like a, a a space scene with a nebula in it and a planet and um, <laughs> thinking you know, make, make it look really easy but you know the first time you try it it's going to come out just as a black soggy piece of paper Yeah, I never really liked it. Uh, yeah, I never really liked it. Some of the jokes, fine. I understand the jokes. You know, the, the message, if you like. But half the time they were just black and white stuff. And it's kind of like... Yeah, as you say, it's a stencil. And it's kind of like, anybody can do this. Um, and and yet, as you say, people who will do something freehand in, in sort of, I will say, full colour, and actually produce something uh, photorealism in some cases. Yeah, it's it's the art world all around, though, isn't it? As soon as as soon as it's you know, it, it's the name. It's not what they produce. It's the name. It's the pile of bricks thing, and and the messed up bed and. You know, is it out? I don't know. But if somebody that you know, if you if you or I did the pile of bricks, it'd be a pile of bricks, because some names done it. It's it's worth millions of pounds. And I mean, funnily enough, you know, Banksy doing something like that nowadays probably is you know beneficial to the area because it drags people to come and see it but yeah so uh, I saw some of them in London and uh, or one of them and it's kind of it was kind of like meh you know it, it clearly stenciled um clearly um it was just black and white and it was sort of don't see it. And and if somebody else had done exactly the same thing in, in the same way, I'd say the same thing. It's not particularly him uh, or well, him, um, but uh, he's he's the most famous example of it.
and you're doing a large reserve like this one of the things that adds to the challenge of doing it is, is I mentioned earlier the board gets hot and as the, the board gets hot in an area the wood actually changes colour a lot quicker because there's obviously a lot of heat already there and you're not having to add as much and so you, as you're doing large areas you have to sort of continuously almost vary things like your speed uh, to, to try and maintain a constant uh, colour rather than uh, you know trying rather than trying to maintain a constant speed so you always get the same colour you've got to vary it as you as heat gets added into the area which is um, part of the fun as they say And that's because, you know, because largely speaking, you're trying to put two lines to close together here and keep the shade between them. You need to overlap them, and in overlapping them, of course, you're adding more colour to the area you've just done. So you're kind of doing it. You got to allow for sort of. Not the first layer you put down to, to create the colour you want, but when you've put the second over, so it overlaps like that, and then your third one sits on top of that, and it's 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 the overlapped bits that you want to be your colour. That way you don't see you don't see, if you overlap them properly, you don't see colour variation across. And I haven't quite got it right here because this bit's slightly lighter. <laughs> yeah, that's a pain in the neck, is that, Freight? I've had that at work when uh, I've had, I've had three, uh, well, three terminals on the desk, and uh, keyboards are sat one in front of the other because that's when you sort of that's the easiest way, and it's wrong keyboard. It's almost as bad as when you've got like multiple chat windows open and uh, as a touch typist I don't I don't necessarily look at the screen nor at the keyboard for that matter and and if I haven't realized that the chat window you know as sometimes happens with some of these programs focus changes or whatever if I haven't noticed I'm busy typing away uh, in completely the wrong chat window and <laughs> things like that That kind of is one of the things I do like, or did like, about the um, the Max when I last used them. That is, and that is um, things didn't steal focus because the focus was, was where the mouse was, so you never had a window steal focus on you, uh, which was good. Exilian, good evening, and welcome to the studio this evening. Did you um, did you see Free's um, excellent demonstration of Bob Ross technique last night?
Ah, oh, that's a pity. You missed. You missed. Um, you mi you missed three. Then he was um, doing a paint along with Bob uh, with Bob Ross. And uh, Mep has said, "I am a cat purple." <laughs> w R X to C said, "Meow." What on earth is that? Why is Cortana talking back to me? She's been doing it all evening for some apparent reason. Neary underscore Chan said flips a table. Where is that coming from? Where is that coming from? Don't know if you guys heard that. Then um, sounds like text to speech, but I didn't know where it's coming from. Do you know what it is, Frey? I mean, earlier on I was watching videos, and I thought at first it was on the videos I was watching, but it was too too clear I'm not running anything that should be doing it Cortana isn't um, support well isn't responding to me as such that I'm aware of I don't know Alder H it worries me when things like that happen What is running? What's that? Okay, that's a katana process. Why is that hanging around? Thank you very much, Aldel H. Why is that hanging around? I don't like that hanging around. Go away. I wonder if that was it. Sorry guys, I'll be back with you in a moment. I don't like machines that do things unexplained. And, uh, yeah. 
something talking to me when for no apparent reason um, does seriously concern me as to what's going on with the machine and why have I a command processor running hmm I do not have host windows open. I do not like that. This window, after the stream, this, wind, this machine is going through a restart. I do. I really hate it when um, lots of applications leave bits of themselves around for a start or they just have things running that you go. Why? Ticket resource for no apparent reason. You can go away, curse, as well. I did try installing last night Discord, um, and it looks like it had left processes around, and I think maybe that was what was talking. I don't like it. Yeah! Well, I've just I've just killed the processes. So. But none of the internet windows uh, were showing it, unless it's loaded. They've loaded e loaded in as helpers in some way. And again, I don't like things loading in as helpers unless you know, unless they ask me first, or I explicitly want them loading. If it continues to do it, it'll get uninstalled. Programs that do things without asking, I um, doesn't matter how good they are. I don't like uh, I don't like them doing it. Yeah. Murdered. I murdered about four different. Uh, murdered about four different processes there, uh, Aldel H. Uh, I, I, I even murdered Curse. <laughs> So all I'm doing is just darkening this area down a little bit. Yep. And well, that's precisely what happened. It's a pity in some ways, isn't it, that pictures of lions aren't like uh, <laughs> um, aren't like weeping angels. <laughs> Beverly ninety nine. Well, strictly speaking, Simba was a um, a cub, wasn't he? So this is an adult lion. So. 
It's, um, but yeah. You can tell from the intense look in his eye that he's got he's, he's looking at dinner. Cecil the lion. For some reason that sounds vaguely familiar, but I'm trying to think of what, why. Uh, Cyro 6. you with with a lion in chat and moobot you know lions and cows <laughs> probably don't mix too well Have you managed to find an image yet? Um, image, a thing yet free for your Peppercraft? If anybody is interested in paper craft, that's essentially making models by folding paper. Um, or in this case, it, that's what it, what it is. Um, 3D Block, who is in chat, is um, considering um, on stream at some point doing a doing a Bob Ross and um, having uh, anybody who wants to. Do it, do it, do it. Well, he will be demonstrating, if you like, um, Peppercraft on stream, and he um, inviting viewers to uh, to um, what's the word? Follow along, and with their own uh, their, their their own effort at doing the same thing. So, if you are at all interested in that, suggest you. Um, uh, you know, check out 3D Blokes uh, channel and, um, and follow him so that way if you uh, are interested in that you'll get notifications and uh, he'll let you know when uh, when he's going to do it and what the um, what the model is going to be
Mm. Mm. We're back to using the other pen shortly. It's nearly finished this um, this shadowed, strongly shadowed corner. I'm not going to take it all the way to black. I might do that later if I um, if I think. But uh, at the moment, just taking it uh, halfway. Just in doing this here, I was just thinking, um, this, this the surface of this wood actually isn't as smooth as it often is, and I think um, what I may have to do in uh, in the future is um, just sand the surfaces more than I normally do. Usually, what I do with uh, with these this wood is I'll, I'll run sandpaper over it, uh, just really to sort of flatten the surface textures usually a lot of like fine hair like um, bits of wood which is which is sort of caused by the final sand that they do in factories they do it with big rotary drums and it uh, it does tend to leave sort of um, I call them hairs but very fine bits of um, wood more or less sticky up from the surface and, and usually all I need to do is knock them down uh, with, with sandpaper, sand them off. Um, but what I am noticing here is quite a lot of dips in the wood. When, when I'm doing some of these dark areas, I'm noticing quite a lot of dips. Which uh, a good sanding should smooth out. So I might have to do that on future boards, I think. Um, of, of these boards anyway. I think I noticed it a little bit on, on one of the others, but it wasn't it wasn't that bad on one of the others. But this one is kind of showing up a bit more than I like. You did Ald L H? Did you think it was good enough to uh, to display? And are you going to show some pictures? Okay, well, before you post a link, let me know and I'll do a permit for you or three canopies around. Okay, there we go. Uh, there you go, um, Alder Lech.
And that's not bad. That's not bad at all. <laughs> and I, I understand the um, I understand the um, the drive for detail, shall we say? That's something I, I always want to have more of is detail. Um, but uh, uh, is that I'm assuming that's done on an armature of some kind, a, a framework uh, Aldel H, not totally uh, clay. The only thing that that strikes me as is the antlers just look too thick. Apart from that, Castang, good evening. Welcome to the studio. Um, that's the only thing is they just they just look uh, and and I know they there are some that are that thick. It just looks a little little thick. Well, that's not. I, was, I, I am assuming it's better than I could do because I've never done any before. But you know, I'm lucky at that and going. I don't think I could do that well. So you know, yeah, it looks good. And the Aztec head looks okay as well. Yeah, never enough detail. I don't know. I I, I always I don't know what it is. I I love detail. Um, sometimes you really don't want it, um, but I'm I'm. It's like this, you know. I want I want something that looks like fur texture. And really street really. St speaking that's such fine detail that I really wouldn't want to do it but I still want to have something that looks like fur um, and it sort of it, it, it does bug me a little bit sometimes in some of the things that I do um, when I do the um, when I do the punch craft stuff um, that in some ways that drives me potty because effectively you can almost think of that as a pixel based art form because literally one punch is one loop of thread like one pixel but um, because it's a loop of thread it can wander on the other side <coughs> and so you can never get you can never get it to be exactly where you want it to be, so you know you can't get a pixel perfect picture. And effectively, you've only got about twelve pixels to the inch anyway. But um, that's still a heck of a would in theory be a heck of a lot of detail, but you just can't get it in, and it can be really frustrating sometimes. Right, and got a dark area there, or a darkish area. Yeah, that's right, and it, it 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 really becomes that trick, isn't it, of knowing when there's enough in that you can go. Well, you know, there's enough detail there. You know, you you've you've hinted at the detail or however you want it to do it, and um, there's enough in, but you don't go too far. And uh, I'm pro well. I will say I'm still learning that point. Like even on here, when is enough detail enough? And I don't know. You know.
Yeah, I agree, um, Alden H. It is, it is that um, you, you get, that, as an artist, if you like, you get fixated on things like that. And as you say, it, it's, it's one of those things that, um, in, in a way, streaming has helped me understand a little bit because what I, what what you're doing is you're seeing obviously you're seeing the same image that I'm seeing when I look on the monitor in front of me, which is um, as as I, I mentioned earlier, it's it's a ten foot picture. I mean, I know the camera actually is literally only a foot away, but the way in which the camera looks at that is, and it may well be because it's an HD image as opposed to super high resolution of your eyes, but it what i see on the screen and what you're you're seeing is kind of the same thing as if i put this stood this up and went and stood five ten feet away from it and uh, you literally when you do that you can't see the details and uh you know you're what i'm seeing on the screen i don't know if you're using a, a, a larger monitor i can't really see the individual hairs i can't see the individual hairs here um in in when I am here in person, I can see each individual line on the screen. I can't. It just merges. And that's kind of... Um, kind of helps me understand, if you like, that I don't actually need to get that. But I still... I still like doing it. <laughs> I still like doing it. And it's kind of... I mean, it's kind of fun. I mean, I'm not sure... I mean, I've done this using sort of what I call a hair texture, using the edge of the the um, uh, shading tool to to create the, you know, what looks like hairs. Um, I probably couldn't do that shading as well if I just used a flat shader. So there's you know, the technique is useful, but it's kind of like knowing, for example, you know, switching to the nose here. When I look at that here in person. It looks a little untidy to me, but looking at it on screen, and that's a lovely, nice sort of transition shade of the nose uh, and the side here. But I completely changed textures uh, in that area uh, three times, and it, it, I will, I will do some more work on that nose because it'll bother me seeing it. But when uh, when you stand back or you see that on stream, it's fine. Yep. <laughs> it's, uh, I guess it's the self-critical artist thing again, you know. And it, it be, it's, it's really hard to, um, oh, I think it's really hard. To, to have what you see as the image in your mind and get that down on the material on the on the uh, the medium I mean I, I had my own image in, in mind for what this was supposed to look like it kind of doesn't <laughs> the hair doesn't the face does but the head the mane doesn't but it's working He still looks like he's sticking his head through a hole in the wall or something at the moment. <laughs> I'm hoping as I put more um, more of the main in around here and, and shade it a little bit better, it will look um, slightly different. But there again, I also perhaps shouldn't tell you guys what I think is wrong with it, because then you'll see that where you wouldn't have seen it before. Just like the image of the plane. You don't see the mistake that's in it until I tell you what's there.
you ever working on wood like this where you're going right up to the edge yeah don't ever try and bring the tool onto the wood from off the wood uh, because you'll always get a burnt edge or almost always get a burnt edge it just depends obviously the pen's hot enough to do that etc you'll get a really dark edge because you can never get the pen to line up perfectly across the uh, across the edge and so what happens is you stop the pen until you get the right height for it to continue and stopping the pen is what makes uh, you know, adds a lot of heat in a small space and makes it go black so with pyrography you always start on the wood and go off it because even though you will as, as it slips off the edge you will darken it slightly because again it then goes verticals instead of being moved so again more heat in one space but it's not there as long and therefore you get a sort of a slightly darker mark as opposed to a black one of course that's totally the opposite to airbrushing where if you're airbrushing you start off and come on you don't go the other way but there you go you're lost in time right now you, you misplaced your tardy somewhere it's so dark uh, well to me here it's been dark since about three o'clock this afternoon but that was partly the weather but it's now we're on GMT it's sort of getting dark at about five o'clock here <laughs> you've got one where the chameleon circuit is working I find, I find Doctor Who quite obviously quite fun to watch. I do watch it, but um, I do actually read a lot of books where time travel is um, it's sort of part of the book, you know, part of the story. Um, I don't necessarily go out searching for the books on purpose, but I do tend to enjoy that sort of book where you've got some form of time travel. Um, or time paradox stuff going on um, so I, I, it is kind of a subject that is uh, interests me
And of course the um, the weird things are that um, the 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 formulas that involve time um, allow for negative time time running backwards. So you know the physics physics if you like doesn't say it's impossible which is weird okay free good night and uh, enjoy uh, enjoy your game and thank you for the uh, the reminder um, it is time to hand over I'll pass the button over to uh, 3d block there who is uh, about to go uh, launch his stream for this evening and uh, generally speaking free starts around about the time I um, I end which is quite convenient because I usually go watching he's a, an interesting streamer to watch whether it's art or games and I will probably be in the stream myself shortly um, it is about that sort of time where I do give up for this evening what I'm actually doing at the moment it's just filling a little bit because well, I'm still doing my art but uh, giving t uh, free time to um, to start his stream so that um, you guys can all hop over there and watch him which is of course the thought just occurs to me is weird because I hosted free last night I think I'm sure I did and I'm not hosting him anymore and I didn't unhost him so maybe Moobot sort of um, does uh, does that for me not sure or whether Twitch does it anyway um, we have reached that time of the evening we've done quite a bit I know it doesn't necessarily look that way, but when you're drawing lots and lots and lots of hair, um, it takes a while to build up. And um, but we have done a heck of a lot. Not only this dark area here, but there's quite a large area of of, uh, of hair that we've done in Maine. That's uh, that's coming along there now, and and adding it in so it's starting to colour and shade. Uh, this back end wants to be darker, and this front end is going to be a lot lighter because of the way the, the light's shining. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of weird, Elder H. The, um, the formulas that govern that sort of thing don't say it's impossible, which you would think it, they would. Um, so, yeah, it, it's potentially possible. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't watch, as I say, I don't watch gaming streams these days. That's not strictly true. I watch Matt Pendleton, uh, Pendleton. Um He's a streamer I do watch, usually when he's playing um, Train Simulator. And there's a few of the favourite ones that I will uh, watch. They used to watch Minecraft or, or um, a couple of other streamers like that. Uh, from the past which I sort of watched for, for many years but, but I, I almost always watch creative these days and it's kind of it's kind of rare when there isn't something interesting to see in creative and when I come across that's interesting for me by the way not necessarily interesting for other people I have different obviously different views but when you come across uh, the situation where I've gone through all the way through creative and there's nothing tweaked my interest enough to watch it's kind of I'm disappointed. I'm kind of. What do I do now? There's nothing to watch. <laughs> it's kind of a very weird thing. There's the whole rest of Twitch. There's all the games on Twitch, and I'm going. But there's nothing to watch. Ah uh, dear. Um, but hopefully, creative is going to grow. Um, yeah, indeed, uh, Aldel H. You can never prove a negative. So it's, you'll never prove it's impossible. You can only prove it's possible. Um, oh, as close as possible to that sort of thing. So, guys, anybody who's watching, 
that isn't uh, familiar with the fact that I do have a shop on Etsy selling some of the jewellery that you're seeing pop up on the stream there um, on, in the window. Um, just the jewellery on there at the moment. I really should get some of the pyrography there as well, I guess, when um, I, I get one of these round to it. Must find a round to it. I've got plenty of square ones, but no round to it. Sorry, that's a, an English joke. Um, but there's some uh, some lovely jewellery there. Check it out and pass the URL on to fan, fans. Fans, definitely fans, but friends and family. And uh, <laughs> hopefully um, yeah, there'll be something there that, uh, that you'll like. Uh, but don't worry if there's not. If you're following, great. If you're not following, I of course would appreciate it if you push that follow button. But if you don't want to, that's okay. You can also follow me on Twitter if you like, and that way you'll get uh, a tweet when I go live, which some say is more reliable than uh, than Twitch is, but I don't know. On the other hand. You could just try and catch me on my next stream, which is tomorrow night, 8 p.m. UK time, 20 hundred hours UTC GMT. All three are the same at the moment, or oh, roughly about two hours ago is when I went live, and it'll be the same time tomorrow, roughly. So, thank you all. I hope I'll see you here in the studio tomorrow or in the future. Have a good evening from the UK, and thank you for dropping in and. Uh, Bye for now.